Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk about the content you need to know in order to absolutely dominate the NPTE. So as you know, as we go through this podcast, we go through the FSBPT content outline. This is how we create the episodes for this podcast as well as the content for our courses. This is what is the published outline for the number of questions and the style of questions that you can expect on the NPTE. So as I've mentioned before, in 2024, the questions will be changing slightly. They're going to add some story-based or case-based questions, meaning that you'll have a paragraph or a, a certain amount of data that you'll have to go through and then answer multiple questions based on that data. Now, the NPTE is not an adaptive test. This means that the questions do not change based on whether you're getting them right or getting them wrong. Rather, it's just a straight set of questions and your job is just to find the correct answer from each of the answer options or each of the questions that are presented to you. So in the end, what'll happen is that it will reduce the number of questions by just a little bit in order to accommodate the more time required to read them. So as we get closer to 2024, I'm recording this episode in 2023. As we get closer to 2024, we'll be adding more and more of these case-based style questions where you'll have to dissect out and really get through a bunch of data in order to find the correct answer and then answer multiple questions based on that data. So uh, with that as our little preview, be sure to check out all of the courses we have at ptfinalexam.com. They are updated and ready to go to help you dominate on test day. Uh, our most popular one is the crash course, really. Three weeks before every test day, it's very inexpensive. It's a great way to go through the, the last little bit. As a, It's like cramming, but better. Because we know that cramming doesn't really work as you try to remember things like the night before the test or the day before the test. However, it is important to be familiar with the content. And we find that as, as we get more and more exposure to, the, especially the big three systems, that's where you see the greatest score increases. In fact, I just talked to someone the other day. Their score increased 200 points. No joke. They increased 200 points and they attribute it to spending the time in the big three systems. They attribute it to spending time in our VIP course. And it was a, just a marvelous success story. And I feel like it, that just translates so well into, uh, into everyone's study strategy to make sure you are spending time in the big three systems so that you're ready for it on test day. All right, so today we'll be talking the cardiovascular and pulmonary section of the test. So this is the little brother of the big three systems, only between 23 and 28 questions related to this. So definitely important, but not quite as big as the neuro and musculos sections. So let's go ahead and get started with our practice question here. As per usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond to it. And then as we go through it, you will uh, then be able to identify your correct answer and we'll talk about the answer together. Here we go. When assessing a patient with congestive heart failure, which of the following characteristics is least likely to be present? So when assessing a patient with congestive heart failure, which of the following characteristics is least likely to be present? One, jugular venous distension. Two, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Three, sinus tachycardia. And four, weight loss. So again, jugular venous distension, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, sinus tachycardia, and weight loss. All right, so the correct answer here, the, as it asks, when assessing a patient with congestive heart failure, which of the following characteristics is least likely to be present? Well, the least likely one is weight loss. Rather, someone with congestive heart failure is likely to have weight gain associated with the edema buildup because the, the pump, the heart, is not pumping properly. Therefore, fluid tends to back up either in the lungs or in the periphery or both, resulting in fluid weight gain rather than weight loss. So these other characteristics, jugular venous distension, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, sinus tachycardia, really all dyspnea, that would be associated with, the, with congestive heart failure, especially left-sided congestive heart failure, which as you recall, left-sided congestive heart failure backs up in the lungs, right-sided congestive heart failure backs up into the periphery, so like the jugular vein, and really into the hepatic or liver system, as well as the periphery. However, it is possible, I mean, certainly possible, that you'll have global heart failure, which means that everything is falling apart, so that you have both lung and peripheral symptoms for just general congestive heart failure. So, uh, trying to think what else I wanted to tell you here, but uh, mostly just watch for the 
the negatively worded questions, the one that say which is least likely to be present or the least likely option. Again, this is an example of you may know the content very well, but if you don't answer the question that they ask, so for instance, if you misread the question, I would just highly encourage that every time you're taking a practice question, make sure that you have read thoroughly what the the correct question is. And this is where uh, my system, I, I've talked about it before in the podcast, but the way that I like to read questions, it's a read three or, or a three X on your reading. First time you read the question is getting a general idea of what it's asking. The second time looking for keywords. And then the final time is just a quick read to make sure that you're answering the correct stem. So if it says most or least or best or worst, and then you go sequentially through each of the answer options, either ruling it in or out, or if you can't rule it out, maybe give it a subjective score in your mind, meaning that, all right, well, that's, I would rate that answer a three out of 10, and would rate this answer a four out of 10. And you get this subjective rating, it can help you compare different answer options if you're not entirely sure which one is the correct answer, especially if you narrow it down to 50-50, try to do a subjective scoring in your mind to say, all right, this one appears to be more correct, not 100% sure why, but it feels more correct because of, you know, something, whatever it is in the, in the answer option. But the point is that you try to sequentially go through each of these answer options and find the one that is the most correct. And just remember, save yourself a lot of energy on test day by telling yourself when the person wrote this question, they had the textbook open in front of them. And so therefore, I don't need to worry about like arguing to say, oh, well, this is totally made up it's, or it's subjective. Rather, there is a correct answer and you can find it. And if you start with that attitude, you'll find that you'll be very successful in answering questions properly and getting an amazing score on the test. So with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. As always, be sure to check us out over at ptfinalexam.com where you can find out more information about all of our ongoing courses. Uh, we run, as I mentioned, our most popular one is the crash course. We have a VIP course. If you're looking for something that's intense and very organized, very robust. You'll see that we go through each of the systems on the content outline to get you ready for exam day. And you can find all of that information at ptfinalexam.com. In the meantime, stay safe. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will catch you in the next episode. Thanks.